Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson we're going to study the area of the circle. I'm just going to give you the formula right off the bat. It's area of a circle equals pi times r squared. r squared means r times r. And it is the radius. So pi times radius times radius is the area of a circle. And we're going to look at the proof here at the end of the lesson. But first let's calculate and go through some problems. Here I have a circle and I need to find its area. I know the radius. The radius is 12 centimeters. So the area is simply pi times radius squared or 12 centimeters squared. And now you take your calculator. 12 squared of course will be 12 times 12. 144. So you can calculate 144 times pi which your calculator may have a button for pi, but if not, you can use 3.14 for pi. So we have 144 times pi equals, it's about 452 square centimeters. Here, we don't know the radius, the radius is not given, but we can calculate the radius, right? It is just half of the diameter. Radius would be eight and a half inches. And now we can calculate the area. It will be pi times, let's put a decimal here, 8.5 inches squared. And now you calculate 8.5 times, 8.5 times pi, or in some other order. You can calculate pi times 8.5 times 8.5 as well. And we will get, again, I'm going to round this to 227 square inches. Here's a garden, a rectangular garden, and inside it is a circular pond. We're going to find the area of the garden without the pond, this area that has grass and plants growing on it. And of course, we find that by subtracting, we would get the area of the rectangle minus the area of the pond. So, I'm going to write here, area of the rectangle, take away area of the pond. And so area of the rectangle is of course 20 times, 20 meters times 38 meters. And take away area of the pond, which is pi r squared. Which, one way to help you remember that is that pi r squared, right? I mean, pi's actually usually are circles, but this time pi r squared. Anyway, back to the pond. Its area would be pi times radius squared, and the radius is not given, so note it carefully. You cannot put 10 meters there. You have to take half of it, 5 meters, and squared. And then you can calculate, depending on your calculator, you may have to calculate this separately, and this separately, and then subtract. But I believe mine will know the order of operations without me doing it that way. Okay and we will get about 681 square meters. How many percent is the brown area of the area of the whole circle? Here we have a percent problem, because we need to practice those two, right? How many percent? But we first need to find the area of the whole circle and the area of the, the brown area here, this that is between those two circles. Once we find those, then we can find the percentage that it is asking. The area of the whole circle is pretty easy. The diameter is given again. So we will calculate that. Then we will calculate this inner circle to be able to calculate the brown area. Because we need to subtract, of course. Let's start with the big circle, though. Okay, it would have the area of pi times r radius the radius is now half a meter squared. So that would be about 0.7854 square meters. Inner circle, its area would be pi times radius, which is now 0 0.2 meters. about 0 
square meters. Now we subtract those to get the, this brown area, right? And so the brown area is about 0 0.6597 square meters. And now the percentage. How do we find how many percent is something of something else? When it is a percent question, you need to form the fraction first. And then you change the fraction into a decimal and into a percent. So just think of it as what part is the brown area of the whole circle? What fraction is the brown area of the whole circle? Of the area of the whole circle. So the fraction is simply, of course, the brown area divided by the whole circle's area. This divided by the area of the whole circle. Like that. And so we will get about 84.0%. And you might say that it doesn't look like it. It looks like this brown area surely isn't almost all of this circle. But the problem is it is not drawn to scale. This diameter here is more than half of one meter, right? So. You have to be careful. The problems in math books might also not be drawn always to scale. Lastly, we're going to look at sort of a proof or informal derivation for this formula. And um, I drew here a circle and I divided it into 16 sectors. And then for this one sector, I drew a triangle, an isosceles triangle there. You see it here? And this triangle is, has almost the same area as this sector here, right? It is pretty close. It's not quite. It is less, but it is close. And if I were to draw, let's say I had drawn 160 triangles, I mean way smaller triangles, but way more of them, then each triangle would have approximated the sector much more closely. But this will work too. We're going to look at the area of this one triangle, and then, once we have calculated that, we will take that 16 times and we will see that that will actually be this formula. Now, the area of this triangle, exactly speaking, is of course half times the base times the height. And here comes our approximation. It is approximately the same as half times another base. The base of this triangle is close to this arc here, arc of a circle here, right? And this arc of a circle here, this part here, this arc of a circle here is exactly one sixteenth part of the circumference. So it is circumference divided by 16. And then the height of the triangle is very close to the radius of this circle. It's not quite, but it's close. And if I had drawn many more triangles, it would be closer yet. Both of these, this base and height, they would both get closer to these quantities here. Okay, and now for 16 triangles, we'll take 16 times this amount, and that would be the area of the whole circle. 16 times half times circumference over 16 times radius. Now you notice the 16s cancel out. And the same would have happened if I had had 160 triangles or a million triangles. The number of triangles would have cancelled out. And then we have half times circumference times r. And now we will see how it turns into this. We are going to use that the circumference is also equal to pi times diameter. That's how the pi gets in there now. And diameter itself is 2 times radius, right? So circumference is actually pi times 2 times r. So I'm going to put that there now. And we will get half times. In place of circumference, I put this. Pi times 2 times r times that r. And now we're almost there because the 2 and the half cancel out. And so we are left with pi times r times r. Pi times r squared. Okay. Now we're all done with this lesson.